welcome you all to part one of semiconductors band theory our life has changed a lot from landline to mobile phones from logarithms to calculators from bulky tv to flat tv from tube lights to leds from inverters to solar cells from offline classes to online classes and the main reason behind this change is about the semiconductors which has made a tremendous change in the technology and we are studying about that in this chapter okay let us begin with the chapter that is about the classification of solids the solids are classified into conductors insulators and semiconductors and firstly let me classify this based upon conductivity and resistivity okay first of all what is the meaning of conductivity conductivity is a property of a substance which allows the current through flow it if there is a solid which allows more current through uh, flow through it we call it as it has high conductivity right so the opposite of that is about resistivity resistivity is a property which resists the flow of a current if a solid do not allow the current to flow it resists more then we call it as high resistivity based upon conductivity and resistivity let us classify the solids okay let us begin with the conductors conductors are the solids which has high conductivity the other meaning of the term is it has low resistivity and the examples for solid is which is the best conductor of uh, uh, electricity in india right that is silver the second place is copper that's what we will be using copper wires a lot now here right then is about gold and then is about aluminum and these are the first four uh, elements which has high conductivity okay now if you go with the insulators it is a solid which do, do not allow current to flow it we can say in this way the solids having the low conductivity and high resistivity right so it's the meaning if it is a low conductivity it must have high resistivity and the example is glass wood plastic rubber so these are all insulators right okay we will be coming with the main concept now here that is about semiconductors the name itself says semiconductor means half conductor it has the conductivity or resistivity in between the conductors and the insulators right so if it is having in conductivity is called as what we say again semiconductors so you uh, if even though there were availability of conductors we are moving to the semiconductors because it has some special properties that conductors do not have the special properties are if you are taking a semiconductor we can control the current through it but in conductors we cannot control right so the second thing is if you want to send the current in only one direction that can be done by using the semiconductors that's why we are moving with the semiconductors rather than the conductors so what are the examples let us check it out first of all the examples is about aluminum semiconductors there are uh, two there is silicon and the germanium even the semiconductors are available in the form of compounds you know here let me call it as compound semiconductors in that let us go with the inorganic inorganic semiconductors are cadmium sulfide and gallium arsenide even the organic are that uh, which are semiconductors there is one of the example is anthracene right even the polymers are available organic polymers that is polyaniline right so these are the examples of semiconductors okay now before uh, we go with this now here before we go with classification based upon band theory let us understand how are the bands formed in solids now okay that we will be taking under the side the energy bands in solids okay let us understand if there is an isolated atom according to bohr's theory we know that the electron which are revolving around the nucleus has a definite energy and we represent this by an energy levels but when these atoms combine to form solids there is a group of atoms the energy of the electron will be disturbed why it is this disturbed because the, this electron has an influence of this electron and the nucleus alone in an isolated atom but in solids it has more influence it has the influence of this electron this nucleus this nucleus and as well as this electron therefore the energy of the electron is disturbed and this uh, energy level will split now here right how it will split if there are four atoms this energy level splits into four and now it will, it will not look like an energy level it looks like a band right so we call this as an energy band so what is energy band energy band is the group of energy levels that the closely spaced group of energy level and this closely spaced group of energy level is called as energy band you may ask why i have not done the energy graph for this energy level because 
this electron has more influence with the other electrons and atoms than this electron. So usually we speak about a valence energy level and it splits into number of energy levels based upon the number of atoms present there. Right? Okay, let us understand much more about this energy band here. Okay. The group of uh, closely spaced energy levels is called as energy band. And this energy band is similar to the friendship band what we wear. What is friendship band? Let me state that so friendship band is nothing but the group, group of threads in here. In the similar manner, what is energy band? Energy band is the group of energy levels. Okay, let me make it in short now here. If you are taking an isolated atom, we speak about energy level. When we speak about solids, we speak about energy bands. Okay, these energy bands are of two types, valence band and conduction band. Okay, this is a band which consists of energy levels of valence electrons. Outermost electron, those are called as valence electrons. Right, there is another one band called as conduction band, which is present above the valence band. Here, it consists of energy levels of conduction electrons electrons or we may call it as free electrons okay let us check it diagrammatically okay this is a band this is a valence band so what is valence band it is the group of energy levels and whose energy levels are these these are the energy levels of valence electrons outermost electron let me call it as valence band and this is conduction band and again it is the group of energy level of conduction electrons then what is the meaning of conduction electrons when the electrons come out from the influence of the nucleus that electron is called as free electron the other name for free electron is conduction electron and uh, if i'm speaking about this this is about the conduction band which consists of uh, free electrons or conduction electrons if uh, electrons are more in conduction band it conducts more if electrons are less in conduction conduction band it conducts less okay and the gap between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band that we call it as energy gap and based upon the energy gap we are classifying the solids uh, into conductors insulators semiconductors that we call it as band theory okay let us classify this. now let us classify this based upon the band theory okay till now what we studied there are two bands valence band and conduction band it has valence electrons it has free electrons and there is a gap between these two okay based upon the gap let us classify this now okay here the the valence band and the conduction band overlap with each other and there is no gap between valence band and conduction band uh, in conductors in semiconductors there is a gap but it's small that we call it a small energy gap which is less than the three electron volt if the energy level is greater than three electron volt we call, we call it as insulators and here there is large energy gap right okay next when we go with the conduction band we say that conduction band consists of free electrons if there are more number of free electrons then it conducts more okay let us check it out here here the conduction band is completely filled because whatever the electrons which are present in the valence band move to the conduction band very easily because they are overlapping it does not require much energy so uh, conduction band is completely filled when we speak here okay conduction band is partially filled above zero kelvin right as temperature increases electron jump to valence band to conduction band so let me take above zero kelvin it is partially filled but when it is of insulators it is completely empty because since the energy gap is too large and the electrons cannot jump from valence band to conduction band okay that is the second difference let us move to the third difference it conducts uh, even at low temperature why because electrons do not require any energy right so even at low temperature so at zero kelvin this conducts no here that it conducts even at low temperature when we speak about uh, semiconductors it conducts at room temperature whenever we speak about room temperature not all the electrons some electrons get energy and they jump to the uh, conduction band so it conducts at room temperature but in insulators even at high temperatures it do not conduct because electrons do not get sufficient energy okay now if you go with the fourth difference we speak about conductivity who will conduct now here right so in conductors uh, free electrons will conduct so let me call it conductivity is due to free electrons but in semiconductors the conductivity is due to right electrons as well as holes that we will be studying in the coming uh, classes now okay and here the conductivity is not possible we, we don't bother about the conductivity there right conductivity is not possible and the lastly we say that how easily the electrons can move from one band to another band okay due to overlap electrons easily move from valence band to conduction band but at room temperature some electrons get sufficient thermal energy it gets sufficient thermal energy and they jump to the uh, conduction band okay but uh, in case of insulators as I told you it has energy gap is too large and it cannot jump from valence band to conduction band now we classified these based upon the band theory
right so in the further uh, sessions we will be studying what are the applications of this semiconductors right thank you